Shila Prabhupada ki jai. If there is a verse in Bhagavad Gita which is one of the most important verses and a unique verse, that is Bhagavad Gita 10th chapter, 10th verse. Why? Because all Acharyas, Ramanuja, Madhvan, Imbarka, even our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, they are unanimously conclusion that the goal of Bhagavad Gita is Sharnagati, surrender. Here is a verse which is talking about love. And this verse is 10th chapter, 10th verse. Tesham Satya Dukta Naam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Mama Piyanti Te Priti means love. Now generally, Bhagavad Gita doesn't touch this topic of love in a general broad sense because the whole Bhagavad Gita is geared towards helping us to surrender to Krishna and when surrender matures, then it develops into love. That's the philosophy. So Bhagavad Gita doesn't touch this topic but here is a verse which is talking about love and Bhakti Thakur says this is a verse for Prayojanam. Prayojanam means the goal of life. Krishna gives a hint in entire Bhagavad Gita. Yes, you should surrender to me but you should not just stay at the level of surrender. Increase your surrender. Develop it. Add feelings to that surrender. Add service to that surrender. Add possessiveness to that surrender. And then develop it into love. So here is a verse which is talking about love, but Krishna has, Gita has something more to say about it. This verse has, 10th chapter, 10th verse has four points in it, embedded in it. The first point is, Te Sham Satata Yukta Nam. The idea is, Krishna is saying you should, Satat means always. Constantly, Prabhupada writes word to word translation. Krishna says, You should be constantly united with me, united in your body, in your mind, in your words. By body, you should follow rules and regulations of devotion, serve Krishna. By mind, you should always think of him, and by words, always glorify him. That's how we remain constantly united to him. Question is, how to do that? It's very difficult to always be united with Krishna, but always think about Him, we tend to forget Him. Or to always serve Him, uh, we tend to become diseased, lazy, and we tend to waste time. So how to do that? Constant is a challenge. We can daily do something for God, but every moment, every second, it's difficult. For full-time devotees, for, de for devotees who have surrendered their life to Krishna, to God, for who are full-time engaged in service of Krishna, even for them it's difficult, at least in their minds. A mind is not always thinking about God. It's mostly the mind is thinking about oneself or somebody else. It's like difficult. So how to do that? That's the question. The answer is in the next line. Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam. Krishna says, you will not be able to constantly think about me without loving me. Preeti. Without love, Nothing can be constant. Without love, everything is temporary. Everything will vanish. So that's why Bhakti Bhano Thakur writes a commentary to this verse that love is not the goal of life. Love is a need, the necessity of life. Without food, we become weak. Food is necessity. Food is not the goal of life. Similarly, love is necessity of soul. Without love, soul becomes weak. When the soul is weak, but the flesh is strong, then we cannot constantly serve or think, we cannot constantly think about God, we cannot be constantly united with Him. And that's why all the devotees, they desire to have love in their life. In fact, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami writes, the goal of, the need or the goal of life is love. And why do we want love? We want love to serve God to always think about Him. So that's the point which Krishna is raising here, the love. But then he says, uh, love is expressed as service. When you love somebody, you want to do something for them. Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam. If I love somebody, I want to do something. A boyfriend wants to do something for the girlfriend. So, Service, love has to be expressed in form of service. It cannot be, love cannot be a simply a, a, a feeling in your heart. That doesn't uh, make any sense because anybody can feel anything. I mean to say, a boy can feel that he loves a girl, but the girl wants uh, the boy to express his feelings. She wants gifts, she wants him to take her to a ride or blah, 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 whatever it is. So that's what Krishna says, Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. If you want constant, 
constant connection with God. Love Him. How to love Him? Serve Him. Prabhupada uses the word loving service in his books. Lovingly serve Him. Service means action. Loving means feelings. And that's the trick which Krishna is telling us. And then he says, the uh, dhami buddhiyo kamtam. He says, if you do so, if you lovingly serve Krishna, then I'll give you intelligence. Uh, but here's a question. So it's a, it, so it's a big, uh, uh, so it's a big dilemma because, on one hand, we say you should constantly think of God. But then, how to constantly think and unite with God by loving Him? But then you can't love Him if you if you don't constantly think about Him. So it's a chicken and egg problem. First, we should constantly think about Him and then try to develop love. Or first, we should develop love and then we should we will be able to constantly think about Him. It's it's a dilemma. What we should do first? If you don't think about Krishna 24 hours, you will never develop love. If you don't love Him. You can you can never think about him 24 hours. So what to do first? It's a cycle. So Krishna says, if you want to break this cycle, if you want to enter this cycle, you want to break this dilemma. The next line is Dhami Buddhi Yogam Tam. Krishna says, I'll give you intelligence. I'll give you intelligence. I'll give you discrimination. I'll inspire you within within your heart. How to enter this cycle of always thinking about Krishna? Loving him and then always thinking about him. How to enter this? Sadami buddhi yogam tam. And Krishna gives us intelligence in form of scriptures, philosophy, association of devotees, or mere inspiration from the heart when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Krishna will guide us through all these, or maybe spiritual master, how to actually, uh, how to actually navigate in this devotional life and develop uh, loving feelings for Krishna, serve Him and to always think about Him. So Krishna says it's by mercy. Buddhi here means mercy by the way. It's not just a blank a speculation, dry speculation, no. It means mercy. Through mercy of Vaishnavas and Krishna, then we can solve this riddle of loving and thinking about him. So Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Maam And when uh, when we can understand how to how to actually love him, serve him and think about him within a heart uh, by the mercy of Krishna, by the mercy of devotees, then Yena Maam then slowly we will be able to approach him, go back to him after this life. We'll be able to actually come near him. That's what Krishna says. Yena maam opyanti te. If Krishna says, if you serve me, serve my devotees, then I will come near you. Yena maam opyanti te. I will come near you. And the so uh, so and a beautiful example is given for this in Christian theology. Just like a bride, a newly wed bride, she she. On the first night of marriage, she waits in her room, uh, beautifully ornamented with beautiful sari and dress. She waits for the bride to come. She's simply waiting. Similarly, when a devotee waits for God to have mercy on him, with this hope that we will attain love, with this hope that one day we will be also be constantly united with God, one day will come when I'll always be thinking of Krishna without interruption. When I'll, when, I'll, when I'll always be immersed in love of God. With this hope, if we wait and serve Him, then Krishna will give us mercy and necessary intelligence so that we can break this cycle of love and constant unison with God. And we'll be able to enter it. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Very much.